Hello, Sharon, Brian. Dr. Vitulli, how are you? Good, sir, and you? Doing well. Did you see the weather? Um, looks like it might be a little bit more than an inch, we thought, right? Yeah, it's supposed to start like, um, like 8, 9 o'clock tonight. You saw it on, on uh, 16? Exactly. Yeah, I was looking at 16, yeah. My goodness, these emails are stacking up. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Jess. Hello, how are you? Doing well. How are you making out? Excellent. Thank you very much. Are you ready for any more snow? We're just talking. Looks like it's coming. Never seems to stop, at least this year. That means that the tulips are going to be coming up healthy and uh, we're in the go. I'm sure we are all counting down for that at this point. I must have did about 300 bulbs. So, you know. Oh, that's exciting for them to start to pop up. Yeah. It's when they start blooming, boy. It's 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 a uh, it's like Holland. <laughs> That's a lot of bulbs, three hundred. Yeah, I put a lot in. That's great. I you know I have all this I have all these big beds beds everywhere. Uh -huh. So I, it you know it's either that or put. Put new mulch in every year. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> so this, this gets around putting mulch in. Right. Good idea. Battery 100%. Connected to just as I found. Dr. Bradley. No ambiance tonight. I had it on, but it looked kind of like um, my wall was on fire and I didn't. <laughs> For some reason, I picked a version of the Yule log that looked a little frightening, so I felt I should turn it off. I'm going to put the birds on. But you have the birds, then you have birds too, right? I have birds, waterfalls. <laughs> yeah. Good evening, everyone. Dr. Bradley, hi, Trine. How are you? Hi, Trine. Dr. V. Trine. I asked my son to make me a water, so he made it very fancy. He did. That is fancy, Dr. Bradley. I felt a little Wait. bit like I was showing off. I'm sorry. Listen, don't be yourself. Everybody <laughs> fancy water sometimes. Mine's not as fancy as yours, but I, I feel like I should go get something to make it. <laughs> Dr. V showing his water too. We're not that fancy, but I like fancy because I do love those glasses. I have those. I love mason jars. <laughs> I got ginger ale. Can you see it? Yeah. yeah. There you go. I'm, I just got a can of ginger ale. Nothing <laughs> fancy.
I'm not going to turn on my screen. I have a whole plate in front of me. <laughs> it's been a long day for you, huh? <laughs> Hello, Rebecca, Sharon, Dr. Riker. Good evening. Hi, Miss Trené. How are you? Good evening. I like your hair curly, Trené. Well, thank you. I haven't seen it that way in a long time. I try. I see Steven's hiding his face, but he's on and muted. <laughs> he wanted to join this evening. Hello, Mr. Steven. Now he might not talk to you now. I know, right? <laughs> there, oh, wait, he, he oh, unmuted oh, himself. Rebecca. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Fuller. Hi. Good evening. Hi, Demary. How are you? Good. How are you, Rebecca? Hanging in there, right? Hanging in there. <laughs> okay. Debbie's on. It looks like the whole committee is on. So, and Dr. Riker is on. Everybody's on that should be on, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, let's. Uh, yeah, I like your article, Demary, right in the paper. Thank you. Our article, it's about it's our, collective, <laughs> our commitment and collective efforts. And we did submit more um, quotes from other members and uh, unfortunately didn't make it in, but I'm really grateful that they included us and we were. Gave us some good publicity. Right, right. We were able to have a positive. Uh, contribution there right so that's great all right well I have seven on the dot so let's go ahead and call the meeting to order starting with the Pledge of Allegiance I pledge allegiance yes, to the flag of the United States, United States of America and to the republic, to the republic for what stands one nation, nation on God, indivisible, liberty, liberty, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Can we have a roll call, please? Absolutely. Dr. Demary Bonilla. Present. Rebecca Bear. Present. Sharon Glasgow. Present. And Debbie Kulik. Present. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, everybody, this evening. Happy mm -hmm. Wednesday. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting, February 10th, 2021? with members of the committee reserving the right to add to the agenda and take further action mm -hmm. in the best interest of the district. Rebecca first. Thank you, Rebecca. Do we have a second? Sharon second. Thank you, Sharon. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 A motion carries. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes from the January 13th, 2021 meeting? So move, Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. Do we have a second? Second, Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. Y'all are tag teaming tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you to Dr. Vituli and team for um a, an aggressive agenda this evening. We've emailed back and forth about all of the things that um, the committee wanted to see updates on and all of the wonderful work that's happening that you wanted to update 
the committee on and um, need recommendations for and just really proud to see all of the efforts. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Dr. V and your team. Thank you, Dr. Bonilla, and, and thank you for your willingness to work with us as we um, create these agendas. Uh, sometimes things come up and we really do want to get them in front of you as quickly as possible. Uh, the first item is simply an invoice uh, for a software service called uh, Off to Class. We have um, a staff member in the district requesting to use this with our adult ESL program. Um, we think it's a... Um, she is currently using a free version, finds it to be very, very useful. Uh, as you know, uh, she serves about a dozen or so um, Spanish speaking uh, members of our community and uh, on a weekly basis, uh, we're looking to get this approved utilizing the Title III grant monies. It's a total of uh, $453.60 to assist this program, which has been um, a part of our district for a number of years. Thank you. And we have it listed as one of the recommendations that we can address. Do any members of the committee have questions or comments? It was my understanding that she also serviced families that were also speaking other languages too. It wasn't just Spanish, correct? If it's the teacher I'm thinking of at Resica who runs the program. You're, you're absolutely right. They may have misspoken, Rebecca. You're, you're okay. absolutely right. Because ESL does address all languages. Right. Because I know she does a big thing every year. If Resica ever can this year. She does at the Festival of Arts. She has all of her um, ESL parents do food from multiple countries, and a lot of them aren't, you know, Spanish-speaking countries. They're, you know, other languages as well. So I just want to make sure that you know, you know, that it's not just Spanish. She helps. It's it's many families, and she's wonderful at it. Yes, she is. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I move to accept the off to class invoice as presented. Uh, thank you. I'll call on you for that again when we get to number seven so we can um, vote on that. Go all the way through. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Dr. V? Yes, ma'am. The next item here is just uh, these are uh, courses that have been approved by you in the past. They are what we call e-dynamic courses and they serve uh, our high school students in the cyber program as well as even uh, hybrid students. We uh, cannot predict their um, popularity. And uh, after the uh, start of the second marking period, there was a, a large increase uh, of students wanting to take these courses uh, online. Uh, so the... Um, we ordered another 40 courses to accommodate those students. Um, I realize this is a little bit late in, in the uh, process, but we just re literally have no way of knowing until the new marking period starts or very close to the new marking period where we stand on what courses we need. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're meeting the needs of our students and if it's popular, uh, we wanna be sure that we're providing it. Where is the funding coming from? This would be through uh, Esser's grant, as, as it is a direct result of the pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, the, the popularity of these. So they'll go through our Esser's uh, number one grant. Okay, thank you. So, Any comments or questions? Go ahead, Rebecca. Yeah. So in the past, before we were cyber, if were students allowed to like decide halfway through a semester or weeks into the semester that they want to take a different class? Or do they choose that in the beginning of the school year when, they, when the schedule comes out? Why are we allowing this now when we didn't in the past? Uh, well, I wouldn't say we didn't do that in the past. We have students who change uh, programs consistently. We have students whose schedules uh, alter because of perhaps uh, their success or failures in the first marking period or second marking period, I should say, first semester. Um, there, you know, we had an idea there was going to be a number of kids in this class. We already had some carryover from our first uh, purchase of, early in the year, but it just turns out that we did not estimate, you know, quite high enough 
and uh, found ourselves a little bit behind the gun. Now the children have the courses. They have the courses, so they're getting what they want and they're asking for, right. uh, which is the most important thing. We're giving courses they literally want to take. So well, I guess my question is, for example, if there was a class like the cooking class that uh, Ms. Pepperato always speaks about, if it, we were in brick and mortar and only brick and mortar and that class was full, they wouldn't get to take it, correct? We would say wait till next year. But now we're, I guess, because we can, we can say, oh, we'll just pay $4,000 more and you can have the class you want. So my question is what's gonna happen when we go back to brick and mortar and we won't be able to just say, Esther's grant's gonna cover this, Esther's grant's gonna cover that. We just have to be careful is my point on gauging what, you know, what we're doing. Of course, I, I recognize what you're saying. Um, I, yeah, it's, it is hard to predict. Uh, we try to maintain a, a small number of these classes. We tried to make a small number of these classes available so we didn't have too many people asking because we also have to support them with staff members. Um, I don't know what that'll bring, you know, I, in, in when we get back to brick and mortar. I, I will tell you this, um, there's a lot of excitement when a child gets to pick a course they really want to take as, a, as an elective. And these are all elective courses. Right. I understand that. And so do veterinary science, it's an often, it's an awesome opportunity to have one of our science teachers teach that particular course. I just feel bad for kids that were brick and, you know, mortar before. And it was a, like, for example, we had forensics and I know several kids wanted forensics last year and they couldn't get it because either not enough kids signed up or too many kids signed up, whichever way it was. And they said, I'm sorry, you can't get it. So it's kind of, you know. But I, I wanna be respectful of um, Rebecca, your points and what you're bringing up and certainly want us to be mindful of that going forward. So right, that's my point, v, yeah. Yeah, so Dr. V, we'll just put that on your radar for you and your team and however we can support through the committee to think about when we go back to brick and mortar. But I am grateful that we have the flexibility right now to meet the needs of the students, especially with all of the emotional and mental issues that are um, that they're experiencing, um, and and just the inconsistencies in other areas. So I'm grateful that we have the Essers grant and we're able to provide the support. And we would just make that um, an informal recommendation, if you will, uh, for consideration as we move forward. And I think. The, um, the curriculum audit is a good opportunity for us to think about how we weave things in. So thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Sharon or Debbie, did you have any questions or comments? Okay, um, Dr. V, I did wanna ask you, I, I didn't ask for the off to class invoice. Where is that coming from? Just wanna make sure we clarify off everything. Off to class is title three. Mm -hmm. Thank title you. Three. We have a substantial uh, balance in that that uh, grant. Thank you. And that's more for clarity and everybody um, to understand where the funding is coming from as they join our meeting or watch the recording later. Um, okay, back to you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. The next uh, presenter is Josh Fuller. He is our uh, assistant principal from the North High School. And he's here to give us an update on their MTSS program. Mr. Fuller. Hi, how's it going? I actually, I forwarded a quick little presentation to Brian Borash. I don't know if he's in here or he got it. Um, if not, I will just reference it from my computer and we'll kind of go from there. Um, I have two purposes. One, I want to give everyone a quick update. See if we can. How, sorry. Right, and I was going to try to let you share your screen. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Brian. Awesome. All right, that makes it a lot easier. So I'll kind of go through. Um, I won't read every slide word for word, but I will go over the important parts of it. So in August, I know uh, Mrs. Fuller actually presented about the grant we were getting. Um, I want to give you an update and kind of re-go re over some of the different points to it since it's been a while. The first point is that there's going to be six days of training 
Four of those days have already occurred. Two of the days occurred in August, and the second two days occurred in November and extended outside of school time. So that's one of the pieces that the grant is covering is staff training and then subs or staff coverage that would have to cover the staff when they are training. There's another training coming up in March that is a check-in check-out training. And we just purchased the materials for that, which also will be covered by the grant. There's an access to a continuum training. They have a whole database that we are using as far as tools and resources. We have a patent consultant that works with us. Now, there's a $10,000 grant for both the North High School and the Middle School. The grant in and of itself is a combined grant. And the overall focus of the grant is to look at the transition from eighth grade to ninth grade, which the data over the years has shown is one of the biggest issues as far as students where they tend to drop off. So that's what we're really trying to eliminate or at least moderate. The monies will come at the end of the training in June. Um, as I kind of alluded to, money is spent on staffing, including teacher trainings outside of normal school hours, sub coverage for teachers, materials, and then check and connect training curriculum, and then other curriculum, which I'll talk a little bit more about, but it's got to be evidence-based in ELA, mathematics, um, SEL, and or behavior. MTSS is one of our building ATSI goals. MTSS, just to give you an overview, stands for Multi-Tier System of Supports, and it's a relatively new initiative in grades 6 to 12. Um, it's basically the old RTII with a lot of additions to it. So one of the pieces that we're working on is an early warning system to tell us which kids need help, and then they would go into our MTSS program. Our MTSS team goes through a whole process where we find what we can do, what we can put in place to best help the kids, be it emotion, emotionally, academically, or in other ways. And so far our system is based on grades, discipline and attendance. And there's a green, yellow, red pattern that we've come up with based on classes that are being passed or failed, days absent and number of disciplines. And at some point in the school year, so far this year, 20% of our kids have been on this list as not necessarily needing any kind of extra intervention, but they come up as a red flag. And that's where the team then makes phone calls home, works through the counselor, works through administrator, works through parents, works with the student to ascertain what would cause a red flag for that student. So the grant will allow us to purchase resources that will support students as they transition from middle to high school and provide both SEL and academic interventions. One of our overall goals of this grant and one of our big material needs that we're looking at in purchasing, we have a ninth grade study strategies class. It's an elective that many of our freshman students are in. We want to base it, use this class and eventually get to a point where almost all, if not every ninth grader that comes over takes this class. And we want to use that class to jumpstart them in the high school and really get specific curriculum to help with that transition. And this is the class we'd want to place it in. And that's where we're going to look to spend that a lot of that money once we're done with the staff training portion of the grant. Lehman Intermediate is also, they have the $10,000 grant as well. It's the same deal. Um, both Lehman Middle School MTSS teams. We actually have common goals that we sat down and discussed. We meet regularly with the Lehman MTSS team to discuss those kids who are eighth graders who will be coming over to help identify them earlier. So it's really forged a great bond between the middle school and high school and will help us help kids earlier on. Two purposes for presenting. Well, one is again, to give you an overview. I don't know um, 
who was at that first meeting and also I wanted to make sure everyone's on board and aware. We just, as of last week, received a contract from the IU 13 um, that will need to be added to the board agenda, I believe. Um, I actually dropped a copy of that off downtown on my way home today with Brooke, and I believe um, she got it to Patricia. Uh, I don't know who that, Demary, if that eventually goes to you, but I just wanted to let you know that that was down there. And then there is a motion, and I've been working over the past couple weeks. Angela Byrne has actually been a huge help with this. So she's helping us track the hours, set up the Munis account. And one of the pieces that we're going to have to do is, or we'd like to do is pay the staff because they have not yet been paid for their trainings in August and November. So that kind of concludes what I wanted to go over. And at this point, if anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to answer and go from there. Thank you. Do any committee members have questions or comments? I do have a question um, about how many students, um, is it MTSS? Yes, MTSS. Okay. How many students transition from um, middle school to high school and are part of the program? Right now, the transition from middle high school, we have about 220 to 240 kids a class on average. And right now, the ninth graders have made up the majority of that 20% of kids. So if we want to okay. look and say 20% of the ninth graders coming over, so probably 20, 25 kids that we're really tracking that are having trouble as eighth graders that we want to make sure we support as soon as they step in our building. As a that was my next question. So the transition doesn't happen during the summer coming. It's as soon as they step foot into the next, um, to the transition to the ninth grade. The discussions on how to help them and what programs and interventions, we start actually the spring before when they're still eighth graders. That way, at this point, we don't have any specific summer interventions for them. That would be a great piece to get to. Um, but at where we are right now, the interventions would start when they start in our building as a freshman. And my last question is, I know you mentioned that there were um, teachers trained in the process for those additional, um, say a group of teacher comes together just to identify some wraparound services for a particular student. Are they pay, Are the teachers paid an additional stipend as a result of that additional time? or are they just paid for the training and now considered certified and they just build it into their existing? No, right now the, the teachers are getting paid our core team, MTSS team, and that's just for training. We have multiple teachers who offer check-in and check-out with the kids. Um, we have our Renew program, which we have teachers that are trained and they do not get a stipend for that. That is just part of what they do. Okay, So thank yeah. you. Yes. Thank you. Any other members of the committee have questions or comments? Um, uh, can you, and if you can't, that's okay, Dr. Riker maybe can, but can you tell us where this grant and this work puts us in terms of um, the MTSS work that's happening in, um, at South High School and North High School. We had the presentation from the South High School before and I just wanna make sure that we clarify where we are for those in attendance and anyone who watches the recording. We're, we're actually, I'm and our team is working very closely with the team from South. Um, my wife, Jen and Kate Lee are the ones who are doing a lot of the legwork as far as what we're going to use as far as paperwork and tracking and the programming. And then I've been working with Amy um, with Sapphire as, and we're getting a new program designed that's going to make, because right now there's a lot of work put into who's failing, who's being absent, and we're creating an actual report that we can run that we'll be able to get instantaneously. So in the overall MTSS picture, we're all completely on the same page and we're setting up our systems, 
jointly and in conjunction with one another. The grant is something that we kind of reached out for in the summer on top of that uh, to help us just get some extra funding to put this eighth and ninth grade transition program in place. Great. Well, any way that we can be proactive instead of reactive, you all know I'd love to say that. Uh, we, we definitely are happy about that. So thank you and, and thanks for, um, to, for sharing that. Dr. Dr. Bonilla? Yes. If I may, I just would add to what Mr. Fuller shared. The one difference, as you may recall, is this year uh, the board approved the use of a, uh, a teacher specifically at South to uh, serve as an MTSS, uh, I'll say coordinator, coach um, for the South High School. And, and that's who Josh is referencing. That is a difference that we do not have at the North High School at this point. And in fact, um, Mrs. Fuller, Josh's wife, is actually the dean that uh, has taken on a lot of that role as part of her, um, under her role as a dean of the school. Um, so it is something that we may want to, we did that this year at South for a year to, to assess that and look at that. And I know um, Amy and uh, Kaylee has put together a lot of data that they are sharing with us to really evaluate the benefits of that role and that position. So we may come back to the committee at a, at a later time in the year to explore whether we want to create something similar for our North High School. Thank you, Dr. Riker. Yeah, that, that's helpful so that we understand the needs that are being met, the leadership, all those that are involved and, and where you all are in terms of the planning and implementation. So thank you. Dr. V, back to you. All right, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. Um, the, I'd like uh, the next section is uh, the DEI quarterly update. Uh, and uh, I'd like to pass the baton over to Trinae Lori. Ms. Lori. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Nice to see all of you. Um, so I'm going to give you an update on what we've been doing in the world of DEI. Um, it's been extremely busy um, and extremely rewarding, and I'm excited. Um, so I completed trainings um, with cohorts five and six. Um, I'm excited to see Mrs. Rodriguez on the, on the call tonight. She was an avid and dynamic participant with me over the past three weeks. So I'm excited to, to see her as well. Um, and we had some wonderful conversations. So um, the work is continuing and people are really responding well um, to the trainings um, and receiving the information um, that's being shared. Um, the article was already referenced, but um, it was about a, 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 adopting an anti-racist curriculum. Um, in the Pennsylvania schools. Um, and it addressed us, you know, as East Stroudsburg with our desire for our curricular changes, as well as our operations to be carried out with the DEI lens, uh, which I think is a wonderful thing to be showcased um, in the paper, you know, for people to see that it was our school as well as another school from York PA as well. Um, but just to see the work that's being done that people are taking notice um, and understanding that this is something necessary for our schools and for our students. Um, so that was, it was a very well done article and I was very proud um, to be a part of being able to contribute to that. Um, our membership is growing. Um, our last meeting, we also had um, Dr. Chris Wolfel who joined us from the IU20. Um, and he was extremely pleased with what he saw from us as a group um, and just the synergy between us and the work that we have, a sped working with one another, I should say, even at the time of us not being a group that's been together very long. Um, to be a part of our group, you would think that we've been working together for an extremely long time um, and we haven't, but it honestly shows the level of commitment um, that people have and the excitement that they have for this work, which makes those things you know, work together very easily. So um, we're excited about that. We also had Kate Strode who joined us, who is the High School North Librarian. Um, and she joined us to speak about the EDI work um, that she was doing, that she took a, um, she was, did a seminar with the Pennsylvania Librarians Association. Um, and she talked about what she learned there, but she also talked about the mirroring 
um, of what she saw from that group and our group, um, which is exciting with that group being a larger, you know, a larger group um, and us being a small group, but the work is being, the work is mirrored and she heard a lot of the same things. Um, so that made me excited again, because that means that we're going and doing things in the right direction. Um, all of our subcommittees are meeting. Um, they are working actively. Um, people are consistent and wanting to make sure that everyone is engaged in the way that they need to be. Um, and we're also very consistent in the work that we're doing. So um, I think that that's just about all for everything that we've accomplished. Uh, we will continue to meet um, and grow. Every time we meet, we have new participants, which excites me um, because what people want to be a part of this um, and this growing work that's going to continue to evolve. Um, and I'm just grateful for the people that I'm able to do it with. So I think that's it for me. Thank you. I think you alluded to this when you talked about our own um, librarian bringing back the resources, but one of the really amazing opportunities for this group is people bringing back resources, whether it's sharing webinars, articles, TED Talks, information that they are accessing outside of the district to share with one another. And um, so if you can talk briefly about what the plan is for sharing some of that and communicating immediately with the committee and then down the line on a broader scale with other stakeholders, that would be great. Absolutely. Um, so we within the, within the DEI group have created a, um, a DEI hub. Um, and with that, um, we have someone that's in charge of that, who when we find resources and things that we feel are relevant, um, that we feel that we should be looking at, um, we submit those. We also submit those. You know, we also communicate within ourselves. When you find something exciting, say, hey, I read this article. Um, it's exciting. I think that's something you would like. I received a TED Talk um, from a colleague of mine who's also doing the work with the elective course that was eye-opening. Um, so I shared it with our executive group, which is something that we'll then share with um, with the with the entire group. Um, so on a larger scale, we'd like to create those with even within that they can be shared with staff, um, you know, for places for people to have information to be able to gain and under, get, gain understanding of resources. Um, but also have a place to engage with other people. Um, so that's where our plan is. We're starting small within ourselves, within the group, but our expansion is to be able to get those resources to our buildings um, and to people so that they have somewhere to be able to pull from. Um, you know, it's like a well, you know, you need to have somewhere to pull from. Um, and that's where, you know, we want to get to a place where people are understanding, oh, this is a place where I, if I need something, if I want an article, if I want to know a book to read, if I want to have conversation with someone, if so, any of those things um, would be available um, in that way. Thank you. Yeah. So just definitely supplementing the training that you are conducting. And, and also just a reminder that this work is going to be um, ongoing, right? There are a lot a lot of things yet to do. So what this committee is is doing right now is setting a foundation so that we can engage others and engage people further in the work. Um, we do have several board members who are uh, have signed up who will uh, be engaging. And so thank you, uh, Debbie and George, who will be joining us, I believe, at our next meeting. Um, thank you, Rich, for all of your support and the conversations and work that we're doing. And Sharon, thank you for your partnership specifically around the HR practices. Our HR subcommittee met today and um, we, we had just a dynamic meeting. So, you know, it's important that we acknowledge the ongoing nature of the work. We will not have arrived. And um, the reality is that we're going to have to evaluate all aspects of the district, right? And be sure that we are uh, transparent and that we're honest with ourselves. Where is the work that we have to do? Who is it going to take to get there? How are we going to work across the district, across all roles and stakeholder levels to be able to move the needle? Um, and to that end, I want to thank Dr. Riker for his commitment because he joins our meetings. And it is important for those who are taking time at 8 a.m. before they start their workday to talk about this and work on this, to see the leader of the district also join, share excitement, share commitment, and encourage people. So I wanna thank everybody for their partnership. And uh, Ms. Piperato, if we can go to you, that would be great. You bet. Hello, everyone. Um, so uh, 
wanted to just give an update about one of the work teams uh, work on DEI. So uh, right now on our committee, we have five work teams around five of the goals that we want to accomplish this year. And one of those goals ha has to do with curriculum, obviously. And there are two main efforts that we are um, hoping to accomplish by the end of this school year. Uh, one, of course, is getting our um, elective course up and running. Um, and so I'm, I'm happy to say we've met a number of times. Mr. Massa has done a, a great job uh, leading us in that effort. Um, and uh, just today, actually, we settled on um, a title and a course description. We have a, a good overview of, of how we're going to structure the course, really centered around um, uh, the experiences of different people groups in the United States and how that impacts the life of people in the United States. Um, uh, and making sure that we're creating students who are thinkers so that as they leave us, um, they can analyze things that happen in the United States, not just through their cultural lens and through the lens of where they come from, but from everybody's lens, right? How, how do I really have empathy and understand what is happening around me? So we are um, just delighted in the progress that we've made um, and are excited to, to share that with students. I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to unveil anything tonight. Sorry. <laughs> I think Mr. Massa uh, and the committee should have that privilege a little bit down the road. Um, but certainly the, the most important things were the title and the course description, because, of course, um, our program of studies is going to be published within the next month. And so we wanted to be sure to have that and, and raise interest for students that way. Um, connected with that work team then is also um, the the next thing on our agenda, I think, which is the curriculum audit. And when we talk about that, we're really, uh, I wanna be sure that we are understanding that, that that audit process is being done through our curriculum cycle through our DEI team. So it's not a separate process, just so you know, we'll, we'll continue to update you um, as uh, Ms. Lurie does those quarterly updates with DEI, because that's really part and parcel of, uh, of that work of that work team. Uh, so right now their efforts are really gauged around um, when we start to look at curriculum from a, ever, from a subject lens, every time we do a cycle, um, what do we need to look at? How do we make, need to make sure that our DEI glasses are on? And so that's what we're talking about right now. And, um, you know, this work has gone on way before us. And so we know that there are resources out there that we can call. And that's where that's where we are in terms of that process right now. Thank you. Are there questions or comments from members of the committee? I want to say I'm glad that we're, when we're reviewing curriculum, we're looking through it from that lens as well, because I think in the past, you know, over the years, way before now, it wasn't. And I don't feel that curriculum looked at the community we're in when they did it. So I'm glad that we're finally saying, does this represent our schools? Does this represent our community when we teach our children? So I think that's very important. Thank you. As well as preparing them, I think, you know, both of you point to this, preparing our diverse students to be able to lead, to be able to advocate, to be able to speak up in, in terms of social justice and the issues that they see, um, to be allies to individuals that are not from their background in a way that we really need to prepare our young people. So it, it is really critical that we do take that time and, and go through the process also so that it is sustainable. So we are not, as we've said, just adding a course and taking out a course, but that, that it's sustainable that long after all of us are gone, we know that we've set processes in place that can be adapted and tweaked to meet the needs of the students at that time. Debbie, uh, Debbie Sharon, do you have any comments or questions? You know, I was, I found it, um... I'm so excited and I know the courses aren't out yet published in terms of the, the topics and the content, but I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the, the different methods or the pedagogy that goes into making sure that we reach every student. Um, it's just an exciting time. You know, you guys are doing phenomenal work. It, it really is, a, it's, a, it's a huge, it's a huge um, milestone. It really, really is. 
So thank you. And thank you, Sharon. We're, we're excited that you've joined the education committee because I know, you know, this is an area of passion and commitment for you as well. And the comment that you made when you joined us a couple months back certainly resonated. And I know Dr. Riker repeated that to the DEI committee, right? We don't just want African-American students studying African-American history. We want all students to be able to access that. And, and so every, every, everybody's contributions are part of this work. It's not just one person, it, it's everybody's contribution. So if you're interested in supporting in some way, certainly let us know. And um, if you're interested in learning, we're happy to share as well. Um, Debbie, I saw that you had um, unmuted yourself. Okay, you can't ever hear me anyway. So I, we Good. heard you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you get a thumbs up, uh, DEI team. Uh, Dr. V, back to you. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Laurie and Ms. Piperado. This next topic basically uh, falls uh, right in line with the, the previous topic. Uh, it's a DEI teacher on special assignment. And uh, I'm going to ask Dr. Riker to, you know, to step in at any time, should I, uh, you know, uh, need some assistance here. But as our district continues to be progressive in its operations in response to our, our, the needs of our students, our staff, and our community members, and to complement the great work that's being done with the DEI committee, we're pr proposing what we think is a natural step in the next, uh, in the proper direction, a new position of DEI teacher on special assignment, a DEI coach, if you will, uh, for our district, a coach to help guide and advise our district uh, as we move forward in growing our knowledge and practice in the areas of diversity, equity, inclusion, and cultural competence. Uh, we are asking the board tonight for any advice or any input you may have in the development of such a position so we can uh, work a little further on it and bring it back to you in a, in a more complete manner. And Dr. Riker, please feel free uh, to fill in anything that I may have missed or. Yeah, I, I would just add Doc um, Vituli that um, you, you hit the components. I, I do appreciate the board's support in the creation of this position. And um, we've met a number of times since our January board meeting, a number of us to review um, some position guides and uh, some tasks that would be associated with a teacher on special assignment related specifically to DEI. Um, you know, I can't help but to continue to compliment Trine and the committees in their work uh, you know, Dr. Bonilla, you mentioned how uh, Dr. Wolfel from the IU joined us, and I think it's, it's important to point out that he joined us after uh, spending at least a year plus uh, at the IU trying to get DEI off the ground and, and really struggled with that, and I think the team here at East Stroudsburg has just worked uh, amazingly well together and has made some phenomenal progress. And we are excited about it. And I do believe the next step as we have shared and proposed is to create this uh, a DEI position so that we have a, a lead uh, point person to really continue to lead those efforts within the district during the school day. And obviously as this work continues for many, many years to come, uh, that will be able to stretch and expand our work into our communities as well. So we're really just looking for any insights. We're not trying to put you on the spot tonight. Obviously, um, we hope to come back to the committee next month with a position guide that's uh, at least in its, as close to being in its final stage as it can be so that we can take that to the board uh, for the full board's approval at the March meeting which would uh, approve the position as well as the position guide and the descriptions and the tasks associated with that position, uh, at which point then we can start to move towards um, getting that position filled and, and continuing uh, the work with DEI that we've already started. It's a big commitment that I think, you know, everyone has really stepped up uh, on top of their day-to-day -day, uh, responsibilities that they currently have. So. 
I believe we're at that point where this will be uh, a, an important direction to go. We're excited about it. So if you have input, you know, with it between now and next month's meeting, you want to drop us an email, give us a phone call, have a meeting. We're just uh, open to those suggestions and ideas uh, from you as the committee. Debbie's had her hand up. So thank you, Dr. Riker. I'm going to ask Debbie to comment. I think you're definitely going in the right direction. <laughs> thank you, Sharon. Debbie, what do you think? What, what were you going to say? I'm just going to say, are we calling the uh, teacher on assignment just a transitional title? Because that would lead me to believe, if I were looking at it from the outside, that it's a temporary type of thing. Are we going to create a DEI specialist for the district? Is that the goal, the ultimate goal? That's a great question, Debbie. And I would say yes. You know, in, in the past, the way the district has implemented um, these types of positions is they have, in fact, transitioned from a teacher on a special assignment. And as the, those tasks continue to grow and as they always do, we continue to, to pile more onto the plate, so to speak. Um, the job starts to expand in its scope. And so at that point, you know, we're probably going to look at something that may be uh, more of an administrative position at some point down the road. And, and that's no different than what we did with our, our grant writer and federal programs. You know, where they started as a teacher on special assignment and then transitioned into uh, a full-time position in, in that role. So I would anticipate and fully expect that that is what would occur at some point in time. So Rebecca, I see your hand. Um, I was going to reiterate that with what Debbie said, because, you know, I think it's, it's not going away. DEI is always going to be there. We're always going to have a need for a type of position like that. And I would like to see it grow into more of a permanent or administrative position like Dr. Riker said, because in my eyes, it's, it's there's always gonna be social injustice. There's always gonna be something going on in the world. I'm, it's unfortunate, but that's the world we live in. There's always gonna be politics. There's always gonna be you know, new people moving into the community, people moving out. And I think it's very important that we keep it forefront and never put it you know, behind us again, it's always got to be in front of us and looking ahead to the future. And I think this type of role is something that I've said we've needed for a long time. And I think it's going to not only help with DEI, but it's going to help with, you know, some of the discipline practices that we use in the district and things like that. I think this person can also help with that as well. And looking at it through that lens and seeing different perceptions of, of words that we use that, you know, in our just day-to-day -day practices. And I think it's just something very important that we need to keep forefront, not ever, once we have it, we can't get rid of it, I think, so. Yeah, well, thank you all for your comments. And, you know, I think the, the comments of the committee uh, definitely resemble those of, of the board. The board is in support of this work. I do wanna remind us, as I said earlier, that there are foundational things that have to happen in DEI work. And part of that is, to um, set, set in motion some things that allow people in different spaces throughout the district to engage in a way that they might not if you automatically have a full-time position and people see it as that individual's responsibility versus everybody's pitching in. So right now we have over 20 individuals who are part of the committee. They're working, I mean, you know, uh, Mr. Ray Lenhart, who's the principal at Middle Smithfield Elementary School is leading our HR subcommittee, right? So people are working, but once we have a position in place, to some extent, people may sit back and say, well, there's a person leading the work, let them do it. Um, and so we wanna be at a place where people have bought in, where they have taken ownership, where they are, contributing in a way that feels like theirs. And so I love what Miss Lurie said when she talked about the article and said, I felt proud that I was able to contribute to that. And that's the direction in which we're headed so that by the time we do roll this into a full-time position, we've solidified the work and it's sustainable. Um, but I think, you know, the sentiments you all have shared 
it, it are right. You know, it is exciting. If you look not just in the region or the state, but across the country, there are very few school districts that have a position leading DEI work at all, whether it's part-time teacher on special assignment at all. So we are similarly to our trauma-informed work leading in this space um, on, on broader scales. And that is very exciting. So when you think about all the deficits or the issues that we have uh, to fix, certainly let's celebrate the areas that we're doing well. Um, some of us on the board participated today in the National School Board Association's Equity Summit. And, um, you know, just I think Ms. Louis said this well, when you said you have to pull from the well, right? You're giving and you're giving and we're working and we just kind of have to um, get, get some more knowledge and continue to educate ourselves. So thank you all uh, of my colleagues as well for your commitment and your support to this. Um, and as parents, you know, I know Rebecca, you often talk about being a parent on the board, same here. It's exciting to see what we're doing for our kids. So thank you all. Dr. V. Thank you. And thank you, Dr. Riker, for your assistance on that. Uh, I'd like to turn the uh, mic over to Mr. Baddock, who's going to speak about uh, a COVID compensatory service for our special education students. Thank you, Dr. Vitulli. And I just want to take a moment while I have it here in the beginning to just recognize uh, Trinae Laurie. She is a member of our Pupil Service Department. Whenever I have the opportunity to recognize a member of our department. Um, I, I do want to do that. Uh, she is uh, a valuable member of our department and she has done a tremendous amount of work with uh, DEI and, and the committee. And, and it certainly does, once again, bring East Stroudsburg to the forefront in the IU and in Monroe County. So, Trinae, congratulations on everything you have done um, and you will continue to do. So I'm very proud of you as a member of our People Service Department. So March 13, 2020, Governor Wolf ordered the closure of all K-12 Pennsylvania schools uh, to protect uh, the health and safety of our students and our school communities during the COVID-19 pandemic. This period of closure was later extended indefinitely on April 9, 2020. By now, the Secretary of Education, Pedro Rivera, who ordered all school entities closed through the end of the 1920 school year, uh, signed into law by Governor Wolf on the 27th who required school entities and school districts to make a good faith effort to plan and offer continuity of education during that closing period of, of March to June for the remainder of the 1920 school year. We go into the summertime, we go into the opening of the 2021 school year, gives all districts, gives East Stroudsburg now an opportunity to reflect upon that closing period that we have from March to June. And now we have to take a look at how we're gonna plan and open up for 2021, looking at virtual hybrid. The uh, Department of Education, US Department of Education, through the Division of Federal Programs, um, gave us um, that, that transition time, that time to take a look and evaluate the impact of that March to June period with all of our exceptional learners. Um, and what we're gonna do with that, that time in terms of helping students recoup and recover um, any losses of, of education and, and regroup a little bit. Uh, we were notified um, from the, uh, the US and, and Pennsylvania Department of Education in early fall that uh, we qualified for a uh, special education COVID-19 impact mitigation grant uh, that was worth up to $58,765. Um, the, the leadership team and the People's Service Department, we put together um, the uh, specifics of the grant um, according to all the, uh, the criteria of that. And I'm proud to say that just a few short weeks ago, we were awarded the full amount of the grant of $58,765 to go towards what we now have the, the COVID uh, compensatory service plan program uh, that we're now going to engage coming up at the beginning of March, all the way through to the end of June for those students that we have identified through the last several weeks, months since September um, that, uh, that we have identified through looking at uh, 
data looking at progress monitoring from the March period to the June of last year, 1920 school year. What does that look like? What are we going to do with that, that, that grant, that money, that $58,000? The plan that we're looking at right now is starting March into June is we're looking at three days a week after school. This is a program that we have to offer after school, and this is part of the grant. Um, we would look at subject areas K through 12, reading, writing, math, social emotional, um, students that, uh, that have goals set in those areas. We would progress monitor with using our staff to instruct students in those, those areas. Uh, we will look at a five week period. We would progress monitor, see if there's any progress that has been made. Um, if progress has not been made, we would extend another three weeks, progress not made, we would continue to extend. We are, we are the only district right now in IU 20 that is beginning to do this program right now at, in, the, in the school year. Our leadership team is, is, is using right now at this time period, because we believe if we start the program now and go to the end of June, that gives us a lot of opportunity to continue to work with our students up to the end of June. So we would prefer to do that rather than compacted in the summer, which a lot of districts may do, which doesn't give us a lot of opportunity to work with our students. And we also believe that we're gonna get a lot of student participation in the program if we do it now immediately right after school. The grant does cover areas such as supplies, curriculum, transportation. It also takes care of the stipend or the cost that it, it, it costs to pay the, our staff to, to, uh, to do the instruction. We also had a budget too for our non-public students uh, that may be that may qualify for uh, as an identified student in the state of Pennsylvania. So we had to set a, a part of that budget aside uh, so we can support those students that are in our non pub uh, programs too. So I just wanted to come in this evening and just kind of just share that out. Um, so we're excited about it. We got the full amount of $58,000. Um, we're, we're still just working on exactly what that number of students looks like right now. Um, Dr. Olszewski and, and Mrs. Cassiata right now are just finalizing those lists. Uh, we're reaching out to our families right now just to confirm. And uh, again, we're looking to start this um, first, second week of March, and we're going to run it right to the end of June. And again, as I said to you that, uh, you know, we're once again going to be at the forefront in, in the county and in the IU. And so everyone is looking at how East Stroudsburg is going to do this model of CCS. Um, and it kind of hopefully they're going to learn from what we have paved the way for everyone else. So I'll answer any questions that anyone has. Is it going to be virtual? Yeah. Like the hybrid, like, because I'm or are we going to bring kids into school after school to do it. We're looking at doing both models, Rebecca. We can do um, our hybrid. We can do face-to-face. -face. So we're looking at both ways at it, yeah. So both our Isaka students and our brick-and-mortar students can both participate equally. Yes, it, it's, it's any student that currently has an active uh, IEP in place from K to 12. Brian, what's the um, timeline on the grant? Uh, we have to... Uh, spend the grant by 9 30 21 so by the end of september um we have to have the uh, the grant utilized completely now if you think about it fifty eight thousand dollars it goes pretty quick if we're going to start it now and go all to the end of june we also have authorization uh to uh if we run out of grants um we got clearance uh matt kraus our access coordinator we're able to also go in and utilize our access uh, fund program, which as we talked about many times before, is a very healthy grant program, or excuse me, a very healthy program with almost $4 million in that, uh, that account right now. So we're able to, to use some of that uh, to help offset any of, the, any of the grant when it ends, if we use all that money up prior to the, uh, the 9-30-21 uh, timeline. 
Thank you. Good questions. I don't have any additional questions. Debbie, do you have any questions or comments? Was she on? Oh, yeah, she's on. My screen keeps moving around, so I see somebody down here, and then they move up. Okay, no, okay, strong nod. Okay, okay. Thank you, Brian. So what are you asking the committee for today? Uh, all we're doing is just giving an update, letting you know that uh, we're awarded the grant uh, through the Division of Federal Programs, and I just wanted to give you an update. Uh, we got the full allotment, and that uh, we're looking to start the program coming up um, in March. So I'll just giving you an update on that, and, and that's where we are right now. That is actually, I didn't see any requests for recommendations on the agenda. I thought I missed something. So thank you for the yep, update. Sure. And we certainly want to stay updated if there is any way that we can support you or be in, in thought partnership with you. But again, another opportunity for us to lead and to be highlighted and you know, figure out some of those kinks along the way for other districts to have it easier when they do it. Um, but you know, when, when we meet at the IU and talk about the work of, of all the districts, I'm always proud to represent our district because people recognize that we are leaders and that we share the information that we gather in the learnings. And so I'll encourage us to continue to, to do that. Uh, Dr. V, is that everything that you and your team have? That's the last agenda item I have. Yes, Dr. Benia, that's everything for tonight. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, at this time, we're going to open up for public participation. Please remember that it's limited to the items of discussion, which are items A through F on the agenda. If someone has a comment um, or a question, please unmute yourselves or raise your hand and I will call on you. Jennifer, I see your hand. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, I have to say, I'm so excited to hear all of this, um, all of these things that are happening with DEI and with the courses. Um, my daughter is currently in ninth grade at the North High School and um, anything that I can do to raise her to be um, a social justice warrior is what one of my 12th graders um, called it. And I love that. Um, I'm, I'm so excited about that. And then my son is in fifth grade, so he's a little bit younger, um, but we do have some serious discussions about what's going on in the world around him. And um, as, as people that are diverse in other ways, um, you know, if you look at the color of our skin, we're, we're white, obviously. Um, so we definitely need to look at things a little bit differently so that we can help those around us. Um, so I'm really excited as a parent and as a teacher, uh, of course, at the North High School to see things for my students coming up, um, things that are going to be available for them and help them see themselves and help everyone look at things through different lenses. I love that, that I, that, um, thought process um, and that that language as an English teacher. So I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's involved in all of this um, because, you know, af even after 18 years of being in the district um, and, and now raising my children in the district to see us moving forward is just, um, I'm so proud to be a part of, of uh, you know, North and, and East Stroudsburg Area School District. So thank you all for all of the work that you're doing. I really, I appreciate it. My husband appreciates it. So thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for being with us tonight. And thank you for your 18 years of dedication to our district. And thank you for saying what can be uncomfortable when it comes to looking at skin color and not ignoring that that's part of our diversity, right? Just one small piece of it, but we have to be able to say that out loud to be able to work together. So thank you. And I was just thinking my boys are in fifth grade, so our kids will be in middle school together next year. So we should compare notes. <laughs> thank you. Stephen Lurie, I see your hand. Please unmute yourself. How you doing? My name is Stephen Lurie. I'm a parent to uh, two kids in a district. Um, we moved up here, I'd say in 2007. Um, and my kids, their friends of, are all very diverse. And so I'm very excited to see the work that's being done 
to go forward with our kids that's going to grow up in this town, that's going to grow up in this world. So it's very exciting to see something like this being done. Um, like you said earlier, like we're leading the way um, in districts across the country doing this. So it's very exciting to know that, you know, um, especially for our kids, that they're going to learn how to treat each other and going to be learn how to view each other through other people's eyes. So I just want to thank you guys for continuing the work that you're doing. Thank you so much. It's exciting to hear from parents. Um, you know, those of us that our parents try to uh, talk about our own experience, but I've, I've said before, uh, we, and in an email that we received earlier, somebody said, you all said you wanted to hear from more people in the community. And I was like, yes, we do want to hear from you. So thank you all for making time to join us. Are there any other questions or comments? Any of my colleagues on the board that are on, who are not on the committee want to share thoughts or ask a question? No, I'm just here to learn. <laughs> Every time I come here, I, get, I learn something new. That's good, George. Thank you for being open to learning. We, we all must be uh, open to learning. So thank you. So Mary, I had just had a comment. Yes. Um, as we think about um, the students that were certain, oh, I don't really have my, um, I apologize. <laughs> My apologies. Um, as we think about the students that we're serving, so this generation um, Z, um, they think totally different from us. Um, and a lot of the um, one thing about Generation Z is they tend to um, emulate the uh, generation who raised them, meaning their parents. But there's some real distinct characteristics of the students that we're educating right now. And I always think it's important to include them. Um, and just recognize that they're looking at things differently. One thing I wanted um, us to recognize, the students that we're serving now, they're financially focused, they're entrepreneurial, they enjoy other people, but they're very comfortable working with FaceTime and other types of technology. They, you know, they're comfortable in multiple settings um, and they're comfortable with face-to-face. -face. They're very competitive they don't see gender as an issue because they grew up where, you know, things are a little more open. Um, we're kind of that barrier that kind of judges, um, but it, it doesn't bother them. So I guess anything um, that we, when the time is right, because I know we're so in the formation stages and it's, it, we're doing a phenomenal job, but always consider the students that we're serving and um, how we can assure that what we're designing and developing is attractive to them. And as, as we continue to move forward, let's be a little more inclusive and, and identify a couple of students um, to participate um, as we continue to flush out some of the opportunities. But we first, we need to recognize you know, who they are and um, always take that in consideration. They wanna be heard too. So they want, they are, they, they're already inclusive. It's us, like it's our generation that has all these, you know, little uh, thought processes that we're holding on to. But it's, it's a different breed of youngsters and it's exciting. And I guess I see it daily just being in higher education. I'm like, I have to meet this student where they are. So I gotta move, I gotta move Sharon out the way and just meet, you know, the child. So it's exciting. I just wanted to mention that, thank you. Yeah, no, thank you for that profile. It's always helpful to just know who who is our audience, right? Um, Ms. Piperato, did you want to speak about the um, survey at all? Would this be a, a good time to talk about survey? Sure, I could mention it. Um, just again, as, as some of that foundational part of the, those five work teams, um, uh, Every single one of those teams knows that in order to A, keep ourselves accountable for the work that we said we were gonna get done this year and to choose goals for the future that are data informed, that we need to be listening to voices of multiple people around us. Um, and of course, the reason we're all here is because of our students, right? That, that, that's what gets us up in the morning. That's what makes us come to work. Um, and uh, recent, uh, just today, um, 
I asked for some letters from our students this summer who went from that summer academy um, to just, hey, give me feedback. How was it? And so it's been so delightful to, again, hear their voices and, and um, uh, not just listen to their delight, but as they form who they are as young people, it, uh, that's just fun. That's, that's why we do what we do, right? So all that to say, in our work teams, we've all identified that we want to listen to student voices, but we also are cognizant of the fact that this generation um, gets hit with a gazillion surveys. So what we're trying to do is consolidate our work in one survey to say, what are all the needs, what all the data that we want to get, what do we really want to get out of these students? Because we don't want to, to bombard them with, you know, one here, one there. You know, when you go to the grocery store and you get that and they say, hey, take our survey. I'm like, I'm out. I, I, <laughs> I can't take another survey. So we don't want to do that to our kids. Um, and so right now we are talking about um, who exactly is our audience and then what do we really want to know from them so that when we put the survey out by the end of the year at the latest, we'll get the data that we need to start making those decisions about moving forward. Um, and we anticipate that we as adults are, are going to read some of those comments and say, oh, yeah, you know what? We, we had our adult glasses on and um, we need to take them off and remember what it's like to, to be that, um, that teenager whose life is um, preoccupied with many more things than, than we are. So that's the work that we're doing in committee around that effort. Thank you. And yes, Jennifer, I'll come to you in a second. Um, but Sharon definitely um, aligned with what you were talking about. And so the youth voice being such an important aspect in informing our work. So thank you for bringing that up. And thank you, Heather, for making sure that we organize that so we don't overdo it. Jennifer? Sharon and, and um, Mrs. Piperato talked about these both of these things. Um, one of the ways that we need to think about how to reach the students is finding some way to tap into social media because that is that is how they communicate that is how they get out their opinions that is how they let what what their social justice warriors come out that way um we are encountering as teachers um issues with emails right they get they get bombarded with these emails so the idea of one survey is awesome but there's got to be some way and i don't have the answer so I apologize, but there's got to be some way to tap into um, Twitter, Instagram, um, Snapchat, Facebook a little bit. But but those those first three that I named, those are the ones that they are posting on. Those are the ones that they're following. That's that's where they get their information. Um, so if there's some way to push out the information that way, um, that's how you're going to get them. That's meeting them where they are, like Sharon said. So I'm hearing you volunteer to do a TikTok video with me. Is that what I heard? <laughs> um, we I should do a school board TikTok. <laughs> that would engage them. Particular TikTok video to get the survey done, right? <laughs> I have to That's sign up for a TikTok. TikTok account. I learned this weekend that I am behind because I don't have don't a TikTok, have TikTok account. Either, so I don't either. So pull that. Okay, so uh, Sharon, I, I, that's that's don't my thing. thing also, on I know how to use Screencastify, so I guess I could figure out TikTok. Do um, you have TikTok? You know, I have TikTok because my daughter baby get TikTok, so I do I have it. So. Has, I know she does, so that's, well, it, that's it, Trina. You and I will make the TikTok video for them. <laughs> well, thank you, uh, thank you, Jennifer. We we certainly do have to be mindful, and thank you, Sharon. We have to be mindful, and I'll say next month we have to check in and see who signed up for TikTok so we can <laughs> walk the walk and not just talk the talk. So hold each other accountable because I keep hearing I need to be on TikTok. Um, but but thank you. These are the kind of nuances and discussions that help us be mindful and you know be attentive to the needs of our students and being able to meet them where they are. And it's so exciting that we can have these discussions. So please continue to join us month after month on these education committee meetings where we can get into some of the meat of the work that then um, goes before the full board. So thank you all. I don't see any other hands raised. So we're gonna go ahead to the next agenda item, which is the advisory recommendations for consideration by the Board of Education. These are 
the three items that were presented above and the administration is looking for a committee to recommend these to uh, go before the finance committee since they all have price tags attached to them and then from there um, to the full board. Do I have a motion? Debbie, Debbie. I heard you. <laughs> do I have a second? We don't need to do a C to the finance committee, do we? Because that's just a grant and it's just an update, if I'm not mistaken. So well, it's just the ingenuity and the off the clock. Well, we can say we can separate it that way if we'd want. You all, you know, have we have this process and you all hold me to it, but we can separate it that way. It's work. That's all. Sorry. You, if you want to recommend that, you're the chair of finance. I am a okay with that. I'm just, okay. I'm okay with it because the MTFS okay. is grant allocation. It's not really. I I saw it more of as an update on how we were using the grant, but that's just okay. how I interpreted so, it. Okay, so uh, Debbie, I thought it would. Paper trail so that we know where the money went. Okay, we can do that. That's fine. Okay, so we'll we'll make sure that one goes smooth then. <laughs> All right. So Debbie made a motion. Uh, Rebecca, will you second that? Of course. Okay. All and in I favor. To add to that to put the TikTok on there for you too, Demary. <laughs> <laughs> no, that one is an informal. <laughs> <laughs> and for you too, I heard you say you didn't have one. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. So we will move those to finance committee. Um, and our next meeting is on Wednesday, March 10th, second Wednesday of the month at 7 p.m. Look forward to having everybody back and hopefully having more uh, people join us. So I have- Still huh? Zoom, right? Um, we will finalize that based on what happens with the full board and we'll share in advance, give advance notice. This, this works well. And so we, we have, we've said, we're going to have zoom anyway, because mm -hmm. people are able to join. Um, and considering all the snow we've been getting, this is convenient as well, right. For, for us getting uh, out of here. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Debbie, 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 I hear you a lot now. A uh, second. <laughs> Okay. Oh, Thank you, Sharon. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I know this is a fun committee. We want to hang out all night, but. Oh, and I just want to recognize Miss Rodriguez too, because I know she wasn't on when we were talking about her ESL stuff. And I acknowledged her for all her work that she does at Recipa. Yeah. And I actually recently met a, a woman who actually takes her class, who I didn't know took her class and she raved about it. So I just wanted to tell her that as well. Yeah. I was going to say, if anybody wanted any questions, had any questions about off to class, I would be more than happy to answer it. But I want to say thank you for the opportunity to um, pay for it because it is a platform that has all different levels at, at the English language proficiencies of these parents. And they, every night when we finish class, the last thing they say is, thank you so much, Mrs. Rodriguez. Thank you so much. And I thank them for coming. Um, and this is a placement test that they can take and they're taking and it levels them. And we do, we do a lesson in class and I can push out homework. They're learning technology. These parents, I'm telling you, my hats are off to them because you know what? This is an exciting time for, as educators. We are in community now. First, I've been here for 18 years. And I love my job and I love working with the parents. And I know I, I run into students that are 25 years old in New Jersey that had me as a fourth grade bilingual ESL teacher. And they're just like, I'll never forget your class. This is what it's all about because it's connection like Trine is saying, but they're just so excited to have a virtual class. I did, I wanted to tell um, Dr. Vituli, I did create a, do, a Google doc that we need to put on our website for virtual classes so that I can get a name and email address and a phone number and get some more into class. I don't like the masses, but more parents. And we're working through the ESL part, um, department for that. But they're so appreciative. I had a parent last week that said, on my text, they all have my cell phone and they and they use it, they're not crazy, but when they need it, they do. And she texted me and she said, Mrs. Rodriguez, I didn't do my homework. And I said, it's okay. She goes, I only did one page, I don't know how to write. And, and this is in Spanish back and forth. And I said, don't worry. And then she said, 
but I'm going to do something else. And she sent me a piece of paper writing sentences and took a picture of it and sent it to my phone. And I was so proud of her, my Maria at level one, saying, look, this is what I did. And I'm just so proud of them. They're very appreciative that the, that this, and I was on, I was in front of the board about maybe five years ago and students came, if anybody remembers that, where they thanked the board for the I Want to Learn English books, the workbooks that we have. And we can't do that because of the situation not being at Resica. But I'll tell you, I'm so excited that we have something for them and they're doing homework. God bless them. They're working with their kids all day and they want to come for a two hour class and do homework. Um, um, it's exciting times for us. Community is happening right now. Right now, everyone's learning together and for an educator and for this district and with diversity training, hats off to Trené, wonderful. It's about time, just saying. <laughs> I am thrilled, absolutely thrilled with what I'm seeing. I had a parent meeting today and parents are coming in. What's good? What's the struggles? What are your challenges? And they're excited that they're with their kids. They're excited to know what their kids are learning. Those are big, what, you know, who, like who who's for, for education, that they're enjoying being part of the process because we're all learning together. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think what, what we, we can do is invite you to give a more regular update at this committee meeting. So if you'd like to give a quarterly update and just kind of share with us um, and I'll, I can work with you by email and give sure. you some guidance, but I think it would be good for this committee to have a regular update so that we can help connect what you're doing to all of the other wonderful efforts that are happening. The other thing is that I have shared um, somewhat broadly, but we, our district is going to be um, highlighted through the Governor's Latino Commission because I chair the education committee there. And so we have Dr. Riker, Dr. Vituli, Ms. Piperato, several others who are going to be part of that committee. If you're interested in that, it, it's an area that we could also plug you in to make sure that our district is highlighted and that you're sharing some of those efforts as well. And again, we're going to be sharing on a broader level uh, statewide. So certainly thank you for the work that you are doing and um, know that, that, that you're important and you're contributing as well. Thank so you. Thank, thank you all. Uh, we will call the meeting adjourned. Um, it was great spending tonight with all of you and my cup is full. So thank you. Okay. <laughs> Good, night. Good, night, Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Oh,